Thanks. Uh, can anybody hear me? So, yeah, I'm Dave Tomlinson. I'm from Plusnet. I've been Plusnet for 20 something years now. Um, Plusnet, for those who don't know, is a wholly owned subsidiary of BT. Uh, so, we all work for BT, but I work primarily on the Plusnet brand um, and have done so for, for 20 years. Uh, one of the enterprise architects specializing in uh, network and OSS for Plusnet. Uh, so I'm going to give you a bit of an introduction first into our, what our network looks like, talk about our RPV6 trial that we planned, and then talk about the deployment that we are, are planning. So unlike Charlie, we are right at the very beginning of our V6 journey. We did take part in uh, World IPv6 Day, for anyone who uh, remembers that back in 2011. Um, but like with the presentation from Cisco, we've struggled with the business case in being able to get it done and get it justified through the, uh, through the business to get that actually out to our customers. So um, we've done a bit of a journey to simplify our network to try and make it so that the, for us, the cost of deploying V6 is significantly lower. So this is a quick look at our network the, the pink bits in the network are on brand. They're the bits that are owned by, by Plusnet. The rest of it is provided by the bigger BT, whether that's uh, OpenReach in the uh, access network or uh, the internet peering platform for access into the internet. So we've split our network now into two separate networks. We call them low touch and high touch. Majority of our customer base are on low touch. About 90% are on low touch. Low touch for us, there is no Plusnet infrastructure in that traffic path at all. The only bit of Plusnet now that it, the customer is reliant on for their, their traffic is Radius. The, the rest of it is just a straight handoff direct from the BT wholesale network into the internet. There's, there's no Plusnet infrastructure in the middle. The high touch is where we do some of the more complex things. So we have customers with static IPv4. We have... Uh, IP blocks, we have a couple of products that we offer to customers that rely on uh, being on a BNG. Uh, for example, we have a product called PDSL or private DSL, which we sell into some uh, bigger corporate customers that gives a private IP access and an MPLS connectivity back into their headquarters or their, their data center, wherever they want it. That traffic goes nowhere near the internet, so it has to go through our, our BNG infrastructure. Um, so the focus of our trial is purely on the low touch network. Should be quite easier to deploy on low touch because there's less devices in there. I haven't got to go and worry about deploying it onto our BNG platform, onto our traffic management platform, or any of the other boxes that are in that network. There's, I think there's something like 40 different devices that have to go and configure, plus all the rest of it that's in there. So. We're going to try and focus entirely on low touch to start with. Uh, the thing that's happening right now, hopefully as I speak actually, the, the, the guys are working on this at the moment, is to set up the V6 connectivity across the network. So we've actually can ping. That's our first aim, is ping. Uh, and then we're going to do a single user test just to make sure that it actually works. So I'm the volunteer. I'll be testing this out. I'm going to get a slash 41 assigned to my... Uh, connection and just make sure it works. Doing it this way, if we inadvertently misconfigured something so the firewalls block the traffic, worst case scenario, it's only me that does, it can't get to the internet rather than thousands of customers in, in my local area. So we don't want that. Uh, assuming success, we're all going to move on to a low volume trial. So we're, we're going to take part where I live in Chesterfield and where our head office is in Sheffield. We're going to pick up some of the uh, staff members and some volunteers, if there are any, from our community site and assign them an IP. Get them to trial it. See what happens. We'll deploy a slash 41 to the MSC, as uh, same as Charlie's doing with a 56 to the end users. Um, and we'll give them DNS at the moment will run over V4. We haven't got a V6 uh, transport to DNS, but we'll the DNS servers do quad A's, so um, we think that well, should give us enough of an idea to see what works, what doesn't work, while we work 
in the background on some of the other things. We think this trial is going to run for about three months, hopefully, hopefully starting at the end of this year. My target is to get me on V6 before Christmas. Whether I can get that done, I don't know. But that's my, that's my target, me on V6, and then we'll ramp up the trial in early January. Let's say run for probably about three months. In parallel, there's a number of activities that we're going to need to do. So we're going to need to go and talk to our call center, give them some advice on, on what they need to do if they see any V6 issues, how to troubleshoot V6 issues, or even just how to understand what a V6 issue might be. Again, hopefully, there won't be too many, but we want to be prepared. Put some help and support information out for the customers so that those who are interested can go and pick something up off of our website and say, oh, yeah, you're doing V6. Great. Um, maybe that'll make my Xbox gaming better, or I'll, I'll come to PlusNet because they're doing V6. Hopefully, well, that'll um, might be a bit of a, a boost for V6 in the, uh, the graphs we've seen earlier as well. And then some operational readiness as well, so we need to make sure all of our internal support teams are ready. We know that as soon as we mention V6, IBSP Review is going to pick up on it and uh, put an article ready up, so we'll need to make sure we've got a PR statement for the uh, people that uh, may pick it up in the press. And then we're going to go live. Our, uh, our CPE that we ship is already V6 ready, so as we start going live, we should see customers automatically picking up V6 because, say, CPE out there, loads of them, are already V6 ready. And we're going to do this across several months. So we'll do it region by region. So we're not going to just go big bang, everyone gets V6 on one day. There's 2,500 different uh, boxes in the uh, BT wholesale network that need to go and be enabled for us. So they're going to do them, what? not one by one, literally, but they'll have some scripts that will do them in a phased approach, probably over the course of several months, uh, to roll it out to all of our customers. Next time they disconnect and reconnect, they should pick up a V6, and we should start seeing that traffic graph ramp up as we move along. That's our main objective, say, to get it out on low touch. That will mean that, say, up to 90% of our customer base could have V6 if they've got compatible CPE and uh, home devices. Uh, they should get V6 pretty early on early next year. Our second objective, so we're not going to ignore our high-touch network. We want to do it on, on there as well. Well, I say, it's a bit more complicated. There's more boxes in there to go and configure. There's less customers, so we get less bang for the book out of it. But we're still going to try and do it. Um, so it's, this is a, the second objective. We've got to go and configure some systems in the back end as well for this to work with uh, um, V6. So that takes a bit more effort. We've got several thousand static IP customers. We intend to give those a static V6 to go along with their static V4. So that needs some provisioning into the, the backend systems that allocates which V6 or which V4 customers get to give them a V6 as well. And those are on dynamic on that. They'll get a dynamic V6, same as we do on our, our low touch network. That'll take a little bit longer. So hopefully sometime next year, we'll, we'll get the, onto this one. Certainly in terms of a trial, we'll get this into this next year. And then I say hopefully we can get it out the door sometime next year as well. And then lastly, we have got a tertiary objective as well, which is to try and get some of our customer-facing and public-facing services onto V6 as well. Already live, quite pleased with this one, we've got the PlusNet community site. So this is already on V6. So if you go to community.plus.net and you're on V6, you'll get served the page over V6. And then from there, we'll, we'll, we'll do more services to follow. We haven't committed a, a list yet, but anything that's public-facing is on that list to try and get done and moved on to V6 uh, over the, the time that follows after that. And that's our plan. Um, so it goes back to 2011 when we had our, our first customers on V6 in World IPv6 Day. Back then, our only public-facing service that we all, I guess technically we had two public-facing services back then. We had the PlusNet website temporarily on V6 for V6 Day, and one of our cat customers was hosting an IPv6-enabled cat feeder. And he had a webcam on it as well on V6, so uh, anyone who uh, had V6 at that point could go and watch his cat, cats, and we had a little button under the webcam to feed the cats. So that was, 
we want to try and get a bit more on from there from where we are today. But that's it, that was our uh, orig origins of V6. And that's the last of my slides. Are there any questions? Uh, let me ask a question. Uh, what made it motivated you to move in this case? What motivated us to move? Yeah, why now? Why, uh, why now? So, um, as I say, we've been looking at V6 since 2011. And every year we've kind of been, it doesn't quite fit in with the budget. You haven't quite got the business case. The reason we've got it this year is because the effort to deploy it now with the way we've built the low touch network is extremely small. We've literally got to go and configure uh, to get connectivity for me. I've got to go configure, well, how many is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight routers. So that's quite straightforward and quite simple. It's, it's not a massive overhead to get that out. So the cost of that is quite small. Additionally, the benefits that we've managed to get uh, from doing this is actually quite surprising because there's a process that we use. It was mentioned earlier, I think, by, by Cisco when they were saying about the DMCA process. In the UK, it's the IPA process, the Investigative Powers Act. Um, for us doing that at the moment, it's quite complicated. But by doing V6, I can essentially retire a platform that's quite expensive to run and quite hard to manage. So the cost of retiring that one platform is less than me doing V6. Mm -hmm. So that's how I've managed to get the, uh, the benefit by saying, by closing a legacy platform, which is a, a target that we want to have is closing some of our legacy platforms. I can move it, I can do that by enabling V6 because we can change the process as part of that. Hi Dave, thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to check as a poll for the room, is there anyone here who has a Plusnet connection in Chesterfield or Sheffield? <laughs> <laughs> Apart from me. Apart from Dave, or anyone who has a friend who might be in that, that room. Or anyone with a Plusnet connection at all, because we can change the area. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got a couple. That's good. That's good. Okay. So we, we can add additional areas. If, if you've got static V4 today, it's a bit harder, because I say it's on our high touch network, which will be second. But if you're on dynamic V4 on one of our current on sale products, then we can probably expand the trial to one of your areas. Yeah, that's a brilliant offer. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the good reason to have these meetings because beautiful things happen afterwards. Yeah. So okay. thank you very much, Dave. This Thanks was excellent. Much.